Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to the stream. Welcome to part number three of Black Sad Under the Skin. Uh, it turns out that the scene I skipped over was uh, not very long. Um, so if you remember, at the end of part two, the game actually crashed at the finish of this particular sequence, the rest of which you'll see here in just a moment. Um, I played through it, made the same decisions, and um, I think I'm right about where I was, so... Turns out that scene was only like but two or three minutes. Not that big of a deal. Night, there's no way out. Your legs cramp up. Your back and neck feel stiff. Your entire body aches to be somewhere else. It's boring and repetitive. It's so bad that your thoughts spiral in a never ending loop. Like when you're stuck in your car on surveillance duty. The owner of La Iguana was supposed to tell Mitchell that a certain anteater was still alive and that it was only a matter of time before he ratted him out. Okay. With a bit of luck, that would make him nervous enough to close his hand. This is where the game crashed All last time. Was follow him. I was a little worried that it was setting up a gameplay segment. Um, but... Uh, yeah, we're still looking for who killed Joe Dunn. The plot is getting a little... There's a lot going on that happened towards the end of the last... The, uh, second part of this game. A couple of, uh... A couple of extra new characters that are, uh, apparently important to the story. I think that's a better sign. That little loading screen, or saving icon, I guess. Okay, yeah, good. I think the game has crashed once or twice each stream, so it's technically a bit of a technically a bit of a mess. But I I really like where the game is going. Um, I like the style of it. So so that's good, at least. <laughs> What a bizarre spot to park your car. This is tight, leads me to believe that there's something around that corner. This iguana's not making it out. supposed to be dialogue or something that happens there oh from the jacket hell's horses he went in without it I wonder what's in it there had to have been dialogue supposed to be dialogue on that sense. Come on. We'll be just fine, don't worry. Gil, stand guard right here. If the cat shows up, you know what to do. I'll be back in an hour. Seems like you're 
Awfully well lit there, Black said. Could I take him by surprise from over there? Although I don't know how I'd get there. Wait, what the hell happened there? Interesting transition. I am gonna die a lot in this segment. What? Where am I going? What is happening? No, oh, that's right. I was like, I thought, I think there are collectibles in this game somewhere. Um, okay. I'm not getting very close with any of this. I'm collecting... Oh, hockey, it's not looking... God, there's a hundred collectibles in this game. While I'm here, for just a second. True. True. Achievements. Look up. Two people have the game completed without dying. Eight people have it with nine lives or fewer. Nobody has the Hall of Fame stuff done. Oh, wait. One person has the Hockey Hall of Fame done. Oh, my goodness. Oh, boy. That is quite the... Uh, definitely need a guide for this stuff. So now what? Is there like any sort of ladder or anything? Or is it Hint, do you need to go over here? No, because you can't. Okay, cool. Thanks for... This is going to sound sarcastic, but I don't actually mean it that way. I appreciate that they just put a barrier there that's like, no, you don't need to... You don't need to go up here anyway. Oh, come on. I was hoping that would help me. God, I feel like I have more, but... I guess with a hundred, like, stuff kind of just feels like you're getting it more frequently. I don't think you can really walk much farther in here. And just on this invisible wall. Alright, cool. So... What am I doing here? What is going on? And I mean, and those two collectibles too were like way the hell out of the way. Bum bum. Dadum. Dadum. You know what would be helpful? Being able to sprint. When you want to be silent, noise can be your best ally.
Okay. Make it making progress there, I guess. Doing the thing, it. What? There has to be dialogue there. Smells like liberty and oil spills. Now where am I? Oh, well, I just hey. died. You're one feisty cat. I accidentally pushed forward on the left stick and, uh, cool. God damn it, game. Okay, so back around the building we go. Exciting. There's no way to move faster. Nope, that's the, not what I wanted to do. This is uh, exciting video game content. Please give me a wall. No. There's got there's I'm sure there's a card over here. Boom. Somebody made noise outside and it like genuinely startled me. Okay. So I just need to get around him somehow. So I need to get up on the building some way. Oh boy. Cool, thank you. This is the, one of the few games where like the the invisible walls are actually a help. Because it eliminates possibilities. I'm just not understanding what the game wants me to do. And good, I hit the wrong button again. Oh, this game so desperately needs a sprint button. Alright, so we'll go over here. There isn't really much you can do. But there have been a couple of times with this particular game where it... F 
block. Where if you don't get within range, like close enough, the button prompt doesn't show correctly. I also wish that the camera would switch back to where it was. That would be very helpful. Hmm. Oh, it's like it's really annoying. I just turned the current turn the camera. Turn the camera around, please. Game. I can't go up the stairs cuz there's a barrier in front of it. Is that something about noise as your best friend? Motherfucker. So what the, what the game hasn't done is it hasn't had a lot of like environmental puzzles. It's kind of been more like the deduction side of things and discovering stuff. But it hasn't been like, how do you get around this person? How do you do that and it seems like there are several options here it's also a game that it, it, because there aren't uh, like you're glued to the ground you can't Kind of, kind of woven-y. That's not what I wanted to do. Why would he say noise is your best friend if there's nothing you can do? There's no fucking run button, and the camera is in such an annoying position, and it's awful, and I really hate it. Yeah, he has the gun. So, it, so there's nothing I can really do in this area, which is fine. I feel like there's supposed to be dialogue here, which is incredibly annoying. Um, hmm. Could it be... No, okay, all right. I did that. I did that intentionally. One feisty cat. Okay, that's fine. I've already died an enormous number of times. All right, cool, great. Yep. Uh huh. I'm dead. Yep. Mm -hmm. Let me retry. Fuck you. So the reason I did that was I was curious if if you could get the jump on him if his back was turned to you or if it was just like no, you are. I didn't move far enough. There's no reason, unless there's something, hang on. Nothing. Nothing, okay, all right. Just wanted to double check, make sure there was nothing I was missing there. Okay. Fuck. I might actually look up a solution for this. Camera's not following.
Why can I keep walking? What is happening? See you later. See you later, everybody. You still going? I can't even tell. I think I finally met a wall. Now it looks like he's getting smaller. Why is this this way? What in the hell? I don't even know if you can see it on the screen. He's all the way in the back. Why can I go so far back? What is wrong? Yeah, I'm really not seeing what the game wants me to do. Um, that I, that's that's one of, that's something that I actually would change is I would make the interactable things have a greater range in which they appear because some of them are pretty small and sometimes you have to get like the correct perspective and that can be a little annoying because. Uh, there's a sequence early in the game where... Okay, that's blocked off. There's... Uh, where you can find some stuff in a locker that if I hadn't been looking in the correct... Uh, in the direction I was looking in... I don't know if I would have noticed it. What? Okay. Well, at least we can move faster. That's that's good. So the question is, where do I... Unless the game will just kind of work with you. Okay, perfect. Alright. This is a huge safety violation, Black Side. Are you serious? Why even give me the fucking option? Just let the game play out how- Oh, that's dumb. That is so dumb. That was my big problem with that sequence. Trying to get into the fucking barber shop poker game was so annoying. That's really dumb. This is really dumb. Why is that even an option? 
That doesn't make any sense at all. fucking killed that dude. Wait, what? Where the fuck has he been? Uh oh. Oh boy. Oh, we didn't kill him? We just knocked him unconscious? Hmm. What does this place have to hide? Gil has orders to kill me. 15 gamer score. Beat someone up for once. I don't know if that qualifies as beating someone up for once. I just jumped on them with a riot shield. And apparently knocked them unconscious even though there was a very like clear like snap of the neck. You know? Well I need help. Who would I call? Mm -hmm. Nah, I don't need to call anybody. I don't care. I could call weekly, but might involve another stupid photography mini game that sucks. It's probably meth. If they learned anything from Breaking Bad, it's meth. May is one of these maybe openable? I think it just—I think that's the same animation. I mean, I guess if you frame it up correctly, you could use it regardless. Wait, can I go through here? Black side, please. Turn. No. That's a weird little. Crevice, okay. That really threw me off. That's oh, actually a different animation. Interesting. But, I mean, they at least made it, like, work in comparison to... Uh, which drum thing you're opening? I think this this looks important. According to this, the warehouse belonged to a Canadian import company. Okay, that not as nearly as important or interesting as I thought it would be.
I believe in you, son. Uh, okay. There's an attic full of objects in the warehouse. It could be an Ojibwa totem pole. In which case, the top animal would be a crane. Okay. A dream catcher. It's supposed to protect children during the night, trapping all evil in its spider web. If I'm not mistaken, these are incense sticks used in cleansing rituals. Oh, okay, great, cool. Anything else up here? I already looked at all of this, I assume. Nothing else, okay. Pardon me. So I need I need to find a key. Oh, you're awake. Good. <laughs> Don't you even think of screaming? I might not even talk. Looks like an arrowhead. Uh, okay, there's an attic full. I'm, gl I'm glad you Everything put those two pieces to together. Gil is a Native American, and I'm almost sure that the woman in the picture is his mother. Okay. The woman in the picture under the totem pole in the warehouse is Gil's mother. What's this warehouse for? It's where I take my naps. I thought that was obvious. You know what? That's true. I cannot totally understand. You know who always believe in you? Your mother. My mother never lost her faith in me. And I gave her plenty of reasons when I was a kid. I was a terrible student. I flunked absolutely everything. Somehow my mother managed to keep me in school until I got into college. But I never gave her reasons to believe in me then either. My parents gave me a monthly allowance, which I spent mainly on poker games and the like. So after a year of college, I quit. Then Pearl Harbor happened. I got drafted and sent to Europe. I never knew how to follow orders. They sent me back home with a dishonorable discharge. But when I got back, I was treated like a pariah, a veteran outcast who never should have come back in the first place. And yet, my mother never ceased to... <coughs> oh. 
I also fought in the war. That's where I met Mitchell. They used me, like many of my people. And then they just tossed us aside. The first time Mitchell offered me to do this, I told him to take a hike. I wanted to get my act together, but I ended up begging him. I don't like Mitchell. I don't like the things he makes me do. I don't like that German rat either. But what I liked least of all was myself. I don't like what I did during the war, and I don't like what I'm doing now. Do you know what it's like to kill a friend for the sake of the mission? Huh. But my mother, she always thought I'd make amends and start anew. I feel like I got incredibly lucky with that line of dialogue. Maybe it's time I did just that. It's number three. What's number three? Is there a number? Yeah, is there a number that I'm not just not seeing? Oh, okay. I don't yeah, I don't see a number anywhere. I think we're getting close. There's only a couple more like story related achievements. I just I don't know what the hell is going on now. <laughs> oh, is this guy gonna beat us up? What is he doing here, by the way? Also, it's incredibly unnerving. What is happening? So we can't even go out the door. What the shit? Go in. Hey. You it's all right. Don't be afraid, little girl. Kidnapped? What? Oh God, we're dealing with kidnapped children. I didn't want to scare you. I don't want to scare you, okay? Evita, no her. It's not part of theater. Let them be. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. Oh, maybe do I do I use them to 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 work with her? Kind of, kind of, coax her out of the corner by using him. I didn't want to touch him because I didn't want to like push her further down the road of like he's being he, he like she's already freaked out and I didn't want to like touch her stuff and make her more mad. Um, once upon a time, uh, let's see. Oh, we'll go with beautiful princess. 
Once upon a time, there was a beautiful princess called... Brunhilda! Hi, my name is Brunhilda, and I'm very happy, said Brunhilda. And then Brunhilda, who had a beautiful name... Really beautiful. A really beautiful name ran into someone very special. Oh, who was it? A magical cat. A magical cat called John. I'm a magical cat, my name is John. <laughs> Hi, John the cat. I really like magical cats. Hi, Brunhilda. I'm going to use my magical powers to help you. Make some delicious pies. <laughs> I love pies. Which is your favorite? Wow, that's a very hard question. <gasps> but John the cat, it's the easiest question in the world. Let me show you how easy it is. My favorite pie is... Oh, well, let's go apple. Apple! Whoa, Brunelda. Mm. That's exactly what I was about to say. <laughs> Yay. John. Brunhilda. Freund. Do play. Each look. Hi, bird. Why are you wearing that mask? Well, mm, uh, uh, well, maybe we should get out of here. What do you think, bird? And what about you, Boonhilda? Don't you think that? That was really great. I really liked that. Did she die? That was just really silly and unexpected. I really like that sock puppet thing. So there's some, Bobby Yale is a name I recognize, Craig, he's following us. Highly flammable, no smoking, Petri dish, oh no, movie, Spanow, Spanow, that's, that's who's following us. A list of names somehow related to chemical agents? Yale on a pill bottle. A list of names that somehow can relate to the chemical, somehow relate to chemical compounds. One of the names was crossed out. So is that, that's it. Nothing really I can do with that. All right. Do really we have any deductions? Anything else?
Nothing else in here. Okay. Oh, is there a film? Is there a, a reel that I can use? Oh, okay, here we go. Okay. I should have gone around this way. Okay. Hmm. Oh, this is going to get dark. Not that part, necessarily. <laughs> That's just a card. But we're going to look at the film of her. Brunhilde Gruner. Treatment, day 1,514. The patient's ability to speak continues to diminish. Now she can only pronounce the occasional word in German. It's as if she had gone back in time, not only due to her declining cognitive function, but because she appears to have forgotten everything she learned since her arrival in America. This degeneration persists, and yet, perhaps due to drastic reduction of benzylprodine dosage and an increase of anupropion, we have observed a 3% of deceleration of said degeneration. Furthermore, and perhaps this is the best finding so far, the subject exhibits a mild recovery of her speaking function. It's not a lot, and yet we are on the right track. All hope is not lost. So now we're going to go over here and we're going to grab this. I don't think we're going to get to watch it, though. Oh, no, we actually are. Okay, that's surprising. Spanner. Treatment. De zero. The subject is a veteran baseball player who has lost speed, strength, and agility due to the regular aging process. The patient refers intense pain on the right scapula, most likely caused by an old injury. Unfortunately, due to the injury's nature, surgery is not advised. The goals of our medical approach are twofold. To relieve pain caused by the prior injury so that the subject can play without symptoms. And to help the patient regain the physical condition lost in the aging process. Thus allowing him to perform at elite levels. To that effect, he will receive daily administration of strong opioids. Along this treatment, day 128. Treatment so far has been a success on all fronts. The patient no longer feels pain when using his right arm. Circumstance that allows him to pitch without fear. Furthermore, the patient's athletic performance is not only up to par with that displayed at the height of his career, but it has even exceeded all expectations, improving the subject's precision and focus. So far, the only side effect seems to be a slight euphoria experienced three hours after dosage, which subsides four hours later, taking the patient on an emotional roller coaster of sorts with bouts of mild trembling. Treatment. Day 341. The patient's health has visibly deteriorated. Moments of euphoria and boosted physical performance have become increasingly shorter, while the ensuing periods of depression and weakness have become longer, including severe trembling and tachycardia. Although we have met all therapeutic goals, we will proceed to terminate the treatment in order to avoid causing irreparable physical and mental damage to the patient.
enhance his performance. Uh oh, they're touching into baseball and steroids. Health took a fall after using the drug, so it was almost a year. 341. Clues allow for a deduction. That one was pretty easy Mitchell to deduce. cashing in by selling drugs to enhance athletes' performances. Mitchell steals... Or Mitchell sells athletes' drugs. Oh, that's what he just said. Clues allow for a new deduction. Okay. First part of Mitchell's scheme isn't that it's illegal or unethical, it's that he didn't even care about compromising the athlete's health. Okay. Dangerous meds. Drugs have unwanted side effects on athletes. Okay, I was holding to see if there was a... Yeah, that. Gil? You know you're not allowed down here. You know you're not allowed. It's... You bastard. Oh. I should kill you right here, right uh, now. Uh, I don't know. You don't know? I know you're testing drugs on that girl. Brunhilde? No. She's my daughter. She was born with a degenerative disease, a rare condition similar to the Angleman syndrome. There are only four known cases like hers, and none of the patients reached the age of five. But I couldn't give up. I continued to research and found something. It didn't make her better, but anyway, that same treatment used on healthy subjects seems to improve their stamina and their reflexes it also seems to improve their pain threshold somehow the reich heard about my experiments and tried to recruit me to create super soldiers yes that reich we're talking late 30s, Berlin. Okay, I got that because of the imagery used to your left, but all right. I escaped with Brunhilde and came to your country. But the American military also heard about me. I spent the entire war experimenting with drugs on soldiers. Some were highly effective, I must say. When the war was over, my experiments were discarded. I was forbidden all access to the drugs, and Brunhilde got worse. But then, God sent me Angus Mitchell. We had met during the war, and he came to offer me a deal. I would make drugs for athletes, and he would sell them. With my earnings, I could pay for <clears throat> Brunhilde's treatment. What else do you want me to say? So you're keeping Brunhilde alive, but the price is high. A price I'm more than glad to pay. You're not a father, are you? Nope. Look! I'm not proud of what I do, but I don't have a choice. About those pills.
There was a bottle there before. There was a bottle there before. What is he looking at? Oh, shit. Back to normal. Take your sixth beating. Don't dwell on it, Josh. You had to tell him the truth in order to protect Brunhilda. I would have done the same thing. Finish packing up your things and stop torturing yourself, okay? Thanks, Angus. I won't be long. Oh, honey. You like living here? Yeah, me too. But we have to go somewhere else, and it's all that bad cat's fault. Yes, sweetie. We're going to a new home now. A prettier one. And you'll be happier there. Now go with Papa, honey. Give him a kiss. Go on. Give him a kiss. Go on. <laughs> I'm... I'm sorry about this, Josh, but... We gave it our best, didn't we? Huh? What? What do you mean, Angus? I wish it hadn't come to this. Wait, no, don't you dare. Angus, what's wrong? Goodbye, Josh. Are you fucking serious, dude? I hope you're happy, son of a bitch. They were good people. I hope that made you feel better. I like it when you smile. You're so far from the truth. What the? Oh, Craig did that. I can't believe he did that to that poor girl. What the fuck? What? Ooh. Do it, coward. That's okay. Spano? Spano just ran out that way. Let me kill him.
Are you, are you serious? Spano's gonna hit me in the face. on everything including steroids and baseball. Okay, yeah. I <laughs> that's gonna lead to a new deduction. Gee, I wonder what happened there. What the fuck is going on? Oh, he's gonna die. His eyes are getting super red. Spano died shortly after recovering his strength. I'm genuinely upset that Brunhilde died. Don't she had nothing yourself. to do with this. You did everything you could. Will he make it? The doctors think so. They found him unconscious by the basement door. What? God, one of these days we're going to stop seeing that picture on the left. Oh. 
Oh my god. No, shoot. So it's definitely this. 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 Maybe it's... Uh, okay, hang on. Let's do this. Mitchell was trapped in the basement. This, maybe? Okay, that's fine. We can work with that. Could Gil have blocked the basement door from the outside to kill Mitchell? You think? That's a serious accusation. Are you sure, or is this just a theory of yours? I'm positive. Gil told me himself. Mitchell practically forced him to work for him. And I've got reasons to believe that Gil is a bit trigger happy. Besides, I'd say he wasn't even really unconscious when they found him. That he was just pretending. Huh. You think Gil was involved in the previous murders? So, Gil? What if it was Gil who killed his partner, Randall Lee, under Mitchell's orders? Another serious oh. accusation. Are you sure? Yes. Everything points in that direction, including my gut. Wait. Couldn't Mitchell be Randall Lee's murderer? What? So he misses with two shots at point-blank range, and then he hits a guy smack in the forehead from across the street? No. Mitchell is not the sniper who wiped out Randall Lee. Yeah, I guess you're right. But we still don't know what caused Craig Spano's death. Yeah, we do. It's very, very easy to deduce that. No doubt about it. Spano took drugs from the lab and they killed him. But if that were true, how many more athletes are in danger? Um, a fucking lot of them. And most importantly, who are they? Is Bobby Yale involved? I didn't see them all, but write down these names. Peter Lowe, Xavier Chains, Helen Moore, Bill Goldman, Miles Benton, Alexander Wood, Jacob Ziegler, and yes, Bobby Yale. Thanks. Saving lives for a change, huh? In any case, this has got to stop. We're friends, damn it. You should have warned me about this. I should have let you know. I'm sorry. Hey, John. Surprise. Oh, fuck. Could have given a tip to a friend, don't you think? Or is that only the case when, uh, when I help you? <laughs> Get that guy out of here. Uh, uh, 
All right. Let's get this over with. When the war ended, Mitchell convinced Groon to use his super soldier drugs on elite athletes. Somehow, Dunn found out about Mitchell's scheme. So when Mitchell heard that Dunn was on to him, he ordered Randall Lee to kill him and frame Yale for the murder. Then, he made Randall search Dunn's house and the gym for any incriminating evidence he might have had against him. The poor cleaning lady died almost by chance. When you stuck your nose in the case, he tried to scare you by sending his thugs to give you a beating. And when that didn't work, he asked Randall Lee to finish you off on the gym rooftop. But Randall not only failed, he got captured. So Mitchell ordered Gil to put a bullet through his head, which only made Gil upset. You kept getting closer and closer to the point of discovering his headquarters. When Mitchell realized he was cornered, he burned his bridges by setting the lab on fire, along with Dr. Groon and his daughter. Gil saw the opportunity to get back at Mitchell, so he blocked the only exit so that he would also die in the fire. Did I leave any loose ends? Just a few. But don't worry about it. I'll take care of them now. So I guess thanks for everything. Not sure how they were our loose ends, but okay. In your classic noir films and novels, solving a case never amounts to a happy ending. The detective is always left with a sense of bitterness. A feeling that, before he took the case, the world was a better place. That he was a better person. Come on, now speed it out! Sometimes I just let my character get the best of me. What do you want from me? I told Stone what I knew. That he was going to let Yale win. That if he didn't, O'Leary would destroy Helen Moore's career, and that Moore was doomed either way, or would be as soon as America discovered her sweetheart was on drugs. I don't believe you. No way. Who sent you? Today? Nobody. And what if I did believe you? What would that change? If I don't do this for her, how could I ever look her in the eyes? How could we stay together? You think you'll stay together when you lose your title? And they accuse her of doping? At least I know I tried. The drug scandal is bound to rattle the entire sporting world soon enough. At some point, the police will have to take it seriously. If you let Yale win, and they find out about O'Leary, you might even lose your freedom. It's not the worst thing I can lose. I wasn't trying to scare Suit him. yourself. But trust me, your manager is a murderer. Get as far away from him as possible. Hey, Black Sad. I'll think about it. So now we're just kind of tying up some loose ends. I mean, that's what he said he was doing.
Yale confirmed to me that Dunn found out that Mitchell was giving him meds. That was the reason they argued the evening of his death. In fact, I was clean at the time. Hadn't used for days. I didn't want to go down that road. I wanted to follow Joe. But he discovered everything. He didn't believe me when I said I had nothing to do with it. But you used again. Only after his death. I, I needed to cope. But the drugs gave you a panic attack. Yeah. But I've been clean ever since. Mitchell gave you the pills when he stopped by the hospital. Hence, your miraculous recovery. Are you planning on taking them before the fight? Do it. Someone has to save that gym. Oh, shoot. I probably should have. Whoops. Sorry about your Aunt Mary. She was a good woman. Shouldn't have given him that answer. But I guess if, you know, if it says the gym. Stone and Yale hadn't taken away the bitterness I felt. I needed a friend. He was outraged that I hadn't given him the tip, but he let it go as soon as I bought him a milkshake. After the perfect storm of corruption and murder, only friendship could reconcile me with the world. Only that could make me believe in mankind again. Why do they have that character model run right into the that. camera? Cleanse my soul. Only that. And money. Is that it? All done now? In your standard noir novel, Yale and Stone would be punished for breaking the rules. There would be justice for Sonia the victim but this was the real world oh, look at as the elephant. detective who had cracked the case I just had to get my paycheck and be on my way nice to meet you Mr. Blacksad Mr. Thorpe is on his way care to take a seat while you wait I guess I'll just have to wait he'll be here in a minute please take a seat No matter how many curveballs Destiny throws his way, he always manages to land on his feet. When he was a rising sports talent, the war put an end to his career, so he became a war hero. After the war, he didn't end up like Gil or like me. He became an elite athlete, a Hall of Fame football star. When an accident left him in a wheelchair, 
he went on to succeed in advertising. Timothy W. Thorpe, the president. Boardroom. Look at that elephant. Hell yeah. What's that? Look at a little porty port? A little dash and hound? Thorpe has ab has hires athletes for advertising campaigns. doesn't work okay I was curious if all of these were gonna tie together whoops that's not what I meant to do my bad hang on I want this one no that's not possible but what if Tim Thorpe was somehow involved in Mitchell's operation mr. Blacksad Mr. Thorpe is running later than expected, but he insists on meeting you, if you don't mind. Sure, as long as you help me fight off this boredom. That's not in my job description, but... What does that mean? I'm not looking down her shirt. Not looking down her shirt. If I had her markings on my skin... Would I be the same person? Would my name be different? Not looking down her shirt. Not looking down her shirt at all. Just avoiding it at all costs. Ten forty-five a.m. Sam Merrick, Delano's, John Blackside, dinner with the mayor. All of Thorpe's appointments are in his agenda. If my hunch is right, there should be a meeting with Mitchell noted somewhere in Thorpe's agenda. Well, you see, I've got a problem. In order to figure out how much Mr. Thorpe owes me, I need to know what day I started working on the case. But I can't remember. You wouldn't have that written down, would you? It sure wasn't on my shift. I'd remember. Let me see. Uh... Governor... Mayor, oh, Miles Benton, Congressman Wallace. Interesting. So we can just. Thankfully, she's, uh, Meeting with someone, Dylan, somebody. Lunch with Paul Rosenberg. Rosberg, Rosson. Hospital. Return flight, LA. Meeting with Millard Smith Hospital. Thankfully, she's so liberally. Turning these pages. Meeting with Bobby Gales crossed out. Meeting with Mitchell. Or no, Reg McNeil. 
meeting with Claude something. Okay, she'll turn the page again. Go back to the seventh. Joe Dunn, no appointment. What? Dunn was here two days before he died? Why didn't Thorpe ever mention that? I'm sorry, but your name's not on here. Uh, da, 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 da. Wait, I just remembered something. The day I came, Joe Dunn had just walked out the door. Well, no. You don't have any appointments. Although, I guess I could have forgotten to write you in. Mr. Dunn, who's usually very kind, left in a flurry. He even slammed Mr. Thorpe's door. Okay. Now I know I have to get into Thorpe's office. And he didn't even say goodbye. Yes, that was the day. You don't recall me because the minute I saw Dunn stomp out, I followed him. I never actually came in. Of course. That explains it. No doubt. Hmm, so... Since it looks like Mr. Thorpe won't be here soon, I think I'll go take a walk down the hall. You gotta stay in shape. Why would she fall for that? Come on, Thorpe. Tell me there's a back door to your office. Hmm. Um, so let's see, we're in the lobby. How we go? Waiting room. Hang on. So, the waiting room. If Weekly were here, I'd have to tie his hands behind his back. Look at how conveniently this is open. So, you had something to do with that chest expander after all. Cats aren't afraid of heights. That's why I've never felt vertigo. Is this where I want to be? In my experience, when something looks really good, it ends up smelling really bad. That's not true. Ham steaks look delicious and smell great. The mechanic has used been used approximately two times. Okay. I better not use it. It might be connected to the switchboard at the front desk. It's a bit strange to see no office chair behind a desk. Until you remember the desk's owner is in a wheelchair. Why is that a new clue? How in the world is that a new clue? Why can I look at this still?
Oh, crap. Why am I surprised? In every investigation, there comes a point where every single lead seems to go down the drain. And you have to retrace your steps to get back on the right track. Okay. Oh, okay. Stop. Hang on. Wait, what, 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 what? Oh, okay. Wait, what if Groon's drugs helped Thorpe walk? Is it really that? No. Okay, so it's those two. This one, that one. Ah, shoot. That's fine, that's fine. Just kind of clipping through. Fuck. One, two, three. Okay. So, this one, this one, yeah, that one, okay. What in the hell? One, two, three. No. All right, one, two, three. One, two, That's all the combinations. There's a deduction, right? When one of the strings, the accuracy of the throw. I earned the nickname Iron Arm. I used to throw the ball in 15 years ago. And yeah. With whatever I wanted. My coach, the great Joffrey Sox. And so I worked hard. Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor. I enlisted immediately after losing a partner in combat and a serious injury. I asked to be relocated. I became a sniper. I know I shouldn't say this. Oh. But I was one of the best in the army. Okay. And it was all thanks to my accuracy. No, it was all thanks to Jeffrey Sachs. I wonder how many Americans that man saved with my arm. After these words, Tim Thorpe has moved almost to tears and asks me to take a break. It's shocking to see how an athlete and soldier 
a man whose aim and skill won him a medal of honor. It was and him. Named surgeon among his brothers in arms. That can't be. I mean, it could be a coincidence, but no. Okay. So this. So there's two new deductions that I can make. One of them I'm not getting, and I wonder if I'm just missing a clue. So, surgeon, surgeon, sniper. Are you, are you fucking, how is that not correct? That's absurd that that's not correct. What? That that makes a hundred percent sense. Come on, game. Don't make me do this. Oh wait. Discard. A sniper. How does that not click? That is... Come on, game. Come on, game. I don't understand how I'm not getting this. Sniper? Bam. I don't understand. I don't understand how I'm not getting this. There are two deductions that I can make right now with the clues that I have. No. I really disagree with that. Of course. That. It wasn't Mitchell or Gil. It was Thorpe who shot Randall at the hospital. I don't know how this don't make sense. I don't think that this has anything to do with anything at the moment. Okay, a sniper, Thorpe. What the fuck? And I, I don't know how the two surgeon pieces don't go together. Unbelievable. I, it's right fucking there. Come on game. Oh, thanks, Doom. That's it. Thorpe is the man behind the whole drug operation. Everything adds up now. And yet I can already hear Smirnov telling me I have no conclusive evidence. What if I set a trap for Thorpe? But how? And the question is, like, is there any, even anything that I can really... ...do with this at the current second? Why is it pull you back? I don't see a one. That 
is not what I wanted. Thorpe's gun up there and corner him so that he has to stand up to get it. The show was about to begin. All I needed was an audience and some patience. to be shark bait, do you? <laughs> like that. I feel terrible for keeping you waiting. John. Uh, but you see, there was mutiny on board, so... Uh, Stop. <laughs> uh, I like her hat. Put up with. All right, gentlemen, to the cabin with you. Onward. <laughs> yeah, I can't. Come along, Black Sad. <laughs> Julie, don't let anyone bother us. Honey, will you wait in the boardroom for me, please? But... I'll just be a minute then. I think you've already suffered enough. Okay. And think about where you'd like to have dinner tonight, okay? Well... <laughs> Funny story about dinner tonight. You see, I'm not going to pay you for solving the case. Wow. I thought you were the kind of man who was true to his word. <laughs> no, it's not that. You'll get every penny we agreed on, and more. But not because you solved the case, but for her. Two days ago, she wanted to end it all. Drop out of college, sell the gym. Too many wounds to heal. But through your incredible work, you managed to heal them. Well, perhaps not completely. It takes time to get over something like this. But at least, thanks to you, Sonia wants to be happy. She has hope. I'm going to help her make Dunn's gym the best in the city. Who would have ever guessed it, huh? I'm happy for her. She's been through a lot, and honestly, I wasn't sure she'd make it. Well, she hasn't just yet, but she will in time. Anyway, back to the case. All those people you confronted. Gil, the German doctor, even Mitchell. Huh. I would have never suspected him. Did they say anything? Why did they do it? Did they mention any accomplices? They did mention a certain surgeon. Surgeon? You have uh, any idea who that could be? I'm sure this comes as no surprise, but it was Angus Mitchell himself. In fact, you gave me the lead by telling me he was a doctor. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I'm glad I could help. Uh, although, uh... You see, besides my esteem for Joe and Sonia, this ordeal uh, really hits close to home. I don't follow. How do you mean? Sports are my livelihood. 
Do you know how many of the athletes involved have a deal with me? How do you know that? What? Oh, wait. Sonia told you. Yes, that, that's it. Uh, Sonia told me. That's funny. I never told Sonia. Well, then, do you know how many of the athletes involved have a deal with me? All of them? Luckily, no. But a lot. So far, the papers only talk about bodies down at the docks and an illegal lab. Not one has mentioned the athletes. But if one word gets out, this agency's future could be on the line. Not to mention Sonia's and the gym's. Could I ask you to be discreet? I'm sorry to say your future is already on the line. What do you mean? I wasn't completely honest with you before. I know you're the surgeon. A journalist told me. Ring a bell? I... I'm sure you've got good intentions, but you're wrong. What makes you think that? I, I'm sure there's an explanation. I know that you are a highly skilled sniper, and I think it was you who shot Randall Lee at the hospital. Have you seen me, Black Sad? How could I possibly do that? Don't deny it. I know Mitchell gave him to you. <laughs> People see a wheelchair and think, poor guy, he can't walk. But there's so much more to it than that. Some nights I can't even sleep from the pain. That doesn't explain why you didn't tell me you knew about those drugs. I hired you to solve this damn case. You think that's what a murderer would do? Only because you thought I'd blame Bobby Yale and drop the case. But as soon as I realized something wasn't right, you sent Randall Lee and Gil to give me a scare. And when all that failed, you ordered Lee to kill me. You're the type that won't open his jaws once he's got his prey, aren't you? You're right. I never let go of my prey. Put yourself in my place for a minute. Nah. You're a promising football player who just got back from the war, but you're still a nobody. The man you saved kindly opens his house to you, and that man is still undone by his wife's passing. He works all day at his gym, and he drinks himself to sleep at night. So you practically end up raising his daughter. You give her her very first abacus. You encourage her to further her education. You comfort her. And she misses her mother and her father. Meanwhile, your sporting career takes off. Life is good. Until one day, out of the blue, an accident cripples you. An old friend, Mitchell, tells you he knows someone who can help you. A German doctor. His drugs take some time to work, but uh, they do wonders. You manage to walk for short bursts at a time, little by little. And those bursts keep getting longer. But the drugs aren't cheap at all. So you have to find a way to pay for them, don't you see? So you decided to start an advertising agency focused on product endorsement by athletes. 
and then it occurred to you to sell them those same drugs you were taking. Drugs would help them excel, and you'd get better ad deals. The perfect business model. Your first client, Craig Spano. His career had hit a rough patch, so... He was the guinea pig for your new operation. And yet, when the drugs started having serious side effects, you got rid of him. Afraid he would talk, you tried to kill him. That's why he hid. From then on, your business was smooth sailing. You even began to think you were above the law. You thought that you were untouchable. Until Joe Dunn found out, and then, two days before his unfortunate death, he came to see you. That's enough now! You stop it! Now, I don't know if I'm above the law, but I am sure as hell not beneath it. Do you know how much power I have? The kind of people I eat with every day? I could shoot you right now, and nothing would happen to me. With that gun you keep in your drawer? I'm afraid not. I placed your pistol out of reach, just in case you happen to confirm my suspicions, Iron Arm. And now, if you'll excuse me, I have an appointment with the police. I won't let anyone wreck my life again. Sonia and I, we deserve a future. You can come in now, Smirnoff. Timothy Wilson Thorpe, drop your weapon. You're under arrest. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford one, the state will provide one for you. <laughs> Mr. Thorpe. <laughs> Oh. Okay, that genuinely was surprising to me. You already knocked the gun out of her hand. Sonia Dunn. You are under arrest for the death of Timothy Wilson Thorpe. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You oh, that's right not what I meant. Attorney. If you cannot afford one, the state will provide one for you. Do you understand these rights as I have just read them to you? With these rights in mind, do you wish to speak to me? Watch your step. I didn't actually think that she needed to go to jail. And...
everything that had happened. The last thing I was interested in was the fight. Did Leo take drugs before the fight? Did Stone let him win? I had done everything in my power for things to go the way my moral compass dictated. Whether anyone would listen to me, that was another story. Hey, very uh, no rocky three. They tell us our actions don't always determine our future. <clears throat> My moral compass, as if I even knew what that means. I didn't even know what to think of my performance throughout the case. Did I have a clear conscience? Would I have made the same decisions, given the chance? There's a couple I would change right at the end. I know I said yes, but... There you go. That's the whole thing. That's the last. That's right about where I thought it would be. We will uh, let these play out. I thought that actually wrapped up really nicely. Um, I think sometimes with these noir style games, it can be a little bit difficult. Um, for as much as I love LA Noir, and I love the game LA Noir, I think it. I don't think it ever really ties everything together super compellingly. Um, and it also has a god awful ending. But I thought this was very well put together. So yeah, that was that was good. I liked it. I was worried that it was getting a little uh, unwieldy with characters and there was a lot going on, but still easy enough to follow. Or, and or, uh, some of the situations didn't really play as important a part as you would think. Like, once it gets to a certain point when, like, Spanow shows up. Spanow? Craig, whatever. The baseball player. Once he shows up, the focus shifts to a different, a different angle. I don't know. I, I like the way, I like the way everything kind of wrapped up together. I will let these uh, credits uh, play out.
Is that the end of the credits? See if there's anything going on after this. I kind of doubt it. I'm sure it'll just kick you back to the main menu. if you continue or does that leave you off just out of curiosity that's the whole game hopefully you enjoyed I liked it I thought it was good has like cool style the soundtrack the musical soundtrack is fucking great Okay, so let's. I just want to check the your black sad. Oh, let's see. Profitable case fifty two point five percent. Oh, hang on. Pull this over here. Uh, profitable case fifty two point five percent versus ruinous case forty seven point five. I'm ninety eight percent of the time. I'm talkative. Swift ninety seven percent. Uh, astute, fifty-one percent, a hundred percent romantic, fifty-nine point six percent pragmatic, fifty-four point eight percent cautious, fifty-nine point six percent sensitive. I don't really know what that means. So there you go. That's all of uh, that's all the black sad. So I'm assuming that it just plays this sequence out. And then if you, like, if you go back, let's see, let's see, let's see, and you hit no, I wonder if that's like a chapter select or something. I, the games, the achievements in this game are going to be a big pain in the ass, because there's a lot of collectibles. There's a ton of collectibles, a hundred of them, but then... Dying zero times, dying fewer than nine times. Those are pretty tricky. Especially because a couple of the sections are pr uh, are very, or feel very trial and error. So if you had a guide, I'd imagine that you'd be able to get through this with little to no problem. Um, After everything that had happened, but other than that, I mean, last thing I, was I, know, I really liked it been kind of it's that I mean it's been that kind of year as far as games have been concerned for me I've enjoyed a lot of the smaller stuff more than the more than the really big stuff but that's just me personally it's, it's it happens every once in a while where a a year comes around and I just because no matter what they tell us don't care about anything really that comes out and it's a lot of just kind of eh to me and that was that was this year none of the game of the year entries that the game awards really interested me maybe like resident evil 2 i don't even know what to think of my performance throughout the case so give me opportunities to do this Did i have a clear conscience would i have made the same decisions given the chance It doesn't do anything different? Really? It's weird that they even give you the opp opportunity to continue. Huh. Alright, well, I didn't do anything. Cool. And now I can't even get out of the credits. So, um... Alright. 
<laughs> that is uh, that is black sad under the skin. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, I really appreciate it. Hopefully this music isn't too loud and you can hear me clearly. Link in the description down below if you want to watch me solve mysteries or play other random things live on the internet. Uh, but uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed part three in the conclusion of Black Sad. Uh, I'll be back some other time with some other thing. See you then.